Hey everyone, and welcome back. I think we've all been waiting for this one. In our last few videos, we put together a basic trading strategy, optimized few parameters, and ran some backtests with past data. Then we took the big leap putting our strategy into a live automated trading bot, launching it up on the cloud using AWS services, and letting it do its thing for a whole month. Today, we will go through the results showing the trades, the equity, and how our trading bot performed over almost one month of live trading. This is code trading. If this is your first time on this channel, I usually provide the Python code and the data files in the description of the video. You can also check some of my Python courses if you are starting your algorithmic journey for trading and backtesting strategies in Python. Just a quick reminder, the strategy is very simple. We use two moving averages to estimate the trend and the Bollinger Band to generate entry signals. If you are interested in the details of the strategy, the backtest and the previous related work, I will leave some links to the previous videos in the description as well. Okay, so now how did we do? How did our strategy work? I downloaded the trades data from my broker's platform. The data comes with all the details we need to understand the trades entry positions, dates, exit times, commissions, and fees costs, profit and loss, and so on. So all the details that we needed. I loaded the data in a pandas data frame and it looks like this. We have all the details, transaction date, the uh, transaction type, some details, the instrument, so Euros dollar because the bot was mainly working on this asset the price, the units, direction, and so on. So we have all the details that are needed to analyze our trades. The uh, broker is providing a CSV transactions file. Then we have our data frame. I'm just selecting a small part of the transaction date column because we don't need the hours for the moment. I'm just selecting the days of the date. So this is how the transaction date column is modified. Here we're casting to date time, the transaction date. And the first thing I'm going to do is to clean empty rows from the profit loss column. Notice that since each of these trades is represented in more than one row, so it can be one row when the uh, the order was created, another row when the transaction was opened, another one when it was closed, and so on. So you can have three or four rows for each of these trades. And what we are interested in is just this part for now, the profit loss. So we are interested in these values. So this one is zero, minus 2.34, and so on. So we're going to clean all the empty rows when we don't have any profit loss value. And this is what I'm doing here using this line. So we have drop in a subset profit loss column in place equal true. And then I'm plotting the um, balance, the balance meaning the equity. So whatever we have here, it's I think the last column, this one. And notice that whenever we have a trade that's closing with profit or loss, the balance is modified accordingly. And this is what I want to plot for now to just to see how the uh, trading was happening during this month. And we can see that we have a decreasing equity. We went from 250 down to almost 200 lost $50 in one month. That's 20% of our equity. Now, it's not very weird because when we were backtesting the strategy, we did have long and sharp drawdown periods, but overall, we expected the strategy to climb back up. What's interesting using this backtest is that some ideas came to my mind after I saw the results and I understood a bit why we had this exaggerated drawdown because we usually expect around 15 to 10 percent drawdown per month according to our back test. Let's go on with the analysis and we'll discuss the improvement ideas in a while. In this cell we are plotting the uh, profit and loss per day. So for each day the overall results. Here we had a positive day for example we are around 2.5 or three dollars uh, over 250 so it's not a big sum. I'm just using this as a paper account to uh, test our strategy. These were positive as well, barely. Then we have also negative days. And notice this one is a very negative day. So this is where the bot was not doing really well. And uh, I think we should be looking in details to this date, this particular day, if we want to analyze where things went wrong. So we can pick up two or three days and see if we can improve and filter those false signals or just shut the bot down and keep it from trading for a whole day, for example, when the same pattern happens in the future. But overall, we can see that we have more negative days than positive days, and we have sharper negative uh, days. Then from the data, from the trades data, I'm interested to know if the uh, bot performed better over time. So if in the morning or depending on the session, the trading sessions, and uh, this is why we can analyze the trading times as well. So whatever we discarded before, the time, component, we're going to reload the CSV transactions file and we're going to keep the uh, transaction time in a different column. So now I have transaction date 
but I also have transaction time column, which is going to show me the time of the uh, uh, transactions. Let me show you the data frame very quickly. So we have transaction date, and at the end, this is what we've added, the transaction time, and this is the hour. This is 9 p.m., 9 p.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and so on. This is plus 2 GMT, by the way. So now we can plot for positive returns trades and for negative returns trades a histogram just to see if there's a shift in the times of positive and negative trades. And these are in blue are the uh, profit loss negative, what we can see here in the background in blue, and the positives are these ones. So I don't see any difference in the times. So the uh, strategy can go through a positive or a negative uh, result trade at any time of the day. So we don't have any preferred session in this case. And to confirm this, we can apply inferential statistical tests. Now, the thing is that transaction time is in a string format the way we did it before. So we have to cast it into an integer for negative PL times and positive profit loss times as well. And this is what we're doing here. Then we're applying two tests, the uh, t-test and the man whitney houston test. Why? Because the t-test supposes that both these distributions are normal distributions, but we didn't test this. Usually we should apply the Shapiro-Wilcoxon test as well, just to um, test for the normality of the data for both of these categories, the uh, negative profit loss and the positive profit loss. But in any case, if it's not normal, we apply the Whitney man whitney test. And this is why I applied both, just trying to do it the quick way. And here we have the results. The p-values are above 5%, 0 0.05. And this one as well, it's above 0 0.05. So in brief, I put a small description here for us. Both of these tests, they suggest that there is no statistically significant difference in the means of transaction time, the means or the medians because the t-test uses the mean and the man whitney uses the median so basically this confirms our visual uh, assumption that there is no difference between these two categories the negative profit loss category and the positive profit loss category uh, they have both very close distributions very close medians and very close mean values as well and this is another plot showing us the positive and negative profit loss trades uh, accumulated for each trading time, so for each transaction time, uh, starting from 5 a.m. Uh, down to 22, so 10 p.m. And we can see that we have some positive trades, then negative trades, and the sum of these two will give you the, uh, the result, which is the red line here, for each of these transaction times. So here we are in a negative, negative, negative. Only these two are in the positive overall. So if we aggregate data according to transaction time, the uh, performance is the same over different hours from different market sessions. So there is no preferred time for the bot to perform. Uh, although we have few trades here in the positive, but these are not meaningful because we don't have enough data. Again, we should be testing this over more than a month to, uh, to get enough trades so we can converge towards a more certain result. But anyway, this shows us how the performance was for the last month. Now, just a reminder, I'm not surprised with this because during our backtest we saw one or two months of drawdown periods and uh, it's around minus 10 to 15 percent every time so we do expect a drawdown even when you're trading manually some months are in negative but since we are seeing these results now we can have some ideas that we can apply to the trading bot to improve the results and just to limit our drawdown periods the first thing i've omitted some details that influenced our experiment i only allowed trades to be opened from 8 a.m to 7 p.m using the uh, uh, using this bot so that's plus two gmt time and so if i wanted to study the trades by time i should have gathered trades all around the clock we would have had a better idea how time influences the strategy we are using so because for now the data is limited to whatever we've been trading and this is also limited between 8 a.m and 7 p.m plus two gmt time the second point is that the optimization was applied on data from two years ago so the parameters for stop loss coefficients and take profits and so on were obtained for somehow old data it's better to fit the strategy on most recent data though and we obviously need more data a higher number of trades to decrease the uncertainty of our results which we already mentioned in the python code when we were explaining the code and finally these points were the result of rushing the process so we can get to this video where I could show you 
this quick analysis. And as you can see, the process requires time and a lot of precision. At this point, I'm updating the code so that an automated optimization is carried out every Sunday, just before the Monday market open time. This would allow us to trade with parameters optimized on the most recent data. I'm still convinced that the indicators combination we are using is excellent, meaning the uh, Bollinger Bands coupled with the two moving averages. The weak point of our system is the trade management part. We are using a very simple approach just to allow our tests to run on the market, but we can improve this. Mostly when to close losing trades and when to close winning trades as well. And this is it for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.